Secretary of State Michelle Reagan, and welcome to Reagan TV, where we're going to be interviewing elected officials and other people involved in government to hear what is happening and what is new and what is current. Our first installment is one of my favorite people, former Vice Mayor of Phoenix and City Councilman Jim Waring. Jim, welcome to our show. Thanks for having me on, Madam Secretary. <laughs> I really appreciate it. You know, when you and I um, served right across the street, um, and I was in the House and you were in the Senate, we did the state budget. And now that you're at the City of Phoenix, of course you work on the budget of Phoenix. How big is the City of Phoenix budget? Well, our general fund is about 1.2 to 1.3 billion dollars. About 70 percent of that billion with a B, 1.3. 1.2, 1.3 billion dollars with a B. <laughs> uh, but about 70 percent is police and fire, and about 75 percent of that is salaries. We're a very labor-intensive city. We have about 13, 14,000 employees, which is a lot less than we used to have. We're becoming a lot more efficient, technological doodads, and all that <laughs> right? stuff. But, but we've got fewer people who are providing the same services and then some that we were providing a decade ago. Uh, we also own the airport, which means taxpayers own it, right. own the water department, and sanitation. All of that put together yeah, is over $4 billion. Holy moly. So I, I don't think most people realize just how big the city of Phoenix budget is. Uh, you're having budget discussions right now. We are. And can you let us know when does your budget start and end and what are you working on right now for the budget? So it's July 1st to June 30th. Uh, so so right just now like the state? On, just like the state, we're working on the budget uh, for, for this coming fiscal year. Really the work has been done. All that's left is the final votes. So that's coming up uh, July 1st and as soon as that happens, you know, we're moving on to the next fiscal year. Unfortunately there are dark clouds ahead. Uh, it's hard to believe. And that's we're what I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> but so, so next year we're projecting deficits. Uh, we're trying to find ways to address those. One way that I didn't approve of is we have pushed off our pension obligations for another decade. That's going to cost taxpayers over time, just like if you have a longer mortgage than you had before, it's going to cost about an extra $2.2 .2 billion. So that's, that's a big problem. And, and I voted against it, but it passed. That frees up and theoretically at least cuts into the deficit for next year by about $30 million. But of course the problem is it adds the deficits dramatically. Right, later on. 15, 20, 30 years from now, those council people are gonna go, what the heck were they doing back in 2017? It's an excellent question, and I just wonder what the answer will be to, to those of us who may still be around. Well, you know, and there's a lot of cities and the state as well facing issues with their retirement programs, but we've also seen in the city of Phoenix a number of different taxes that have gone up over the years, sometimes little taxes that a lot of people don't pay as much attention to as I think they should. Well, we've been on a tax increasing spree, unfortunately. Property taxes have gone up. Last year, city council voted, not me, but city council voted to increase property taxes. Sales taxes went up with the transportation plan of 2015. Very light rail intensive, so people complain about the quality of our street repair, but only about $1 billion of the $31 billion plan went to fix streets, which I thought was unconscionable, given most people drive right. cars rather than... And I, I was shocked when I was reading about the cost of what the entire vision for light rail is going to cost, and, and voters approved it. We have about 50 million miles in Phoenix uh, in 2050, when, I don't know about you, but I'll be 82, so this is really the plan for the rest of my life, and I'm only middle-aged now, so that's a little bit frustrating, to say the least. Light so when you're 82, you can ride it the whole uh, way. I can ride it to Mesa, <laughs> which is basically where it goes, it begins and ends. Of course, with a car, you can take it to the Pacific Ocean, or Cal you, know, you can take it to Florida, or whatever, so it's, it's not really the same thing and only about two percent of the trips per day in the city of Phoenix are light rail. The rest is cars, buses, bicycles. We've also raised fees to park at the airport, fees to park downtown, and the water bill. So it's a good thing we can't tax air, at least we haven't found a way yet. Right, yeah. That would have gone up too. Every basic thing that you want from the city, the price tag has gone up and we're still going to be running a deficit projection based for next year. And you know it's important to note when you mention deficit is and that is the cities are like the state. We can't print money. We're not like the federal government. We can't go in the hole. Exactly so it's right. going to be very interesting to watch how the city of Phoenix and how some of these other cities um, deal with this. Well, but one way they dealt with it, as you saw last week, was pushing off pension obligations. That's money we have to pay. Courts have said we owe. That's it. So it's a contract. So we're going to have to pay eventually. 
the price tag is going to be much greater than it would have been before if we've been more fiscally responsible. Well, you know, I appreciate you so much coming in and letting us know a little bit more about the City of Phoenix budget. It's something that's that's uh, elusive to some people, and that this is very, very helpful. And thank you for all the work that you do. Well, thank you for being a wonderful friend and colleague. We, we've known each other for 20 years. I know. I know it's kind of scary. I don't to think say we're that, that old. So. Know, but, uh, <laughs> so we've known each other since we were kids. But you're an excellent public servant, and I appreciate your friendship. And we certainly appreciate you. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you.